Hi, my name is Morgan Fleming. Um, my field of study is early childhood education. Um, I didn't always know what I wanted to do with my career. Um, when I first graduated high school, um, my mom, you know, she's always been in the medical field, so she just kind of assumed that I was going to do that as well. Um, we talked a lot about going into nursing school. We talked a lot about physical therapy. Um, and I wasn't really interested in either one of those. And she works at Texas Children's and she works with an occupational therapist who kind of opened my eyes to what occupational therapy was. And I had a really big interest in it only because I liked where she worked. I liked that she worked with kids, which is ultimately what I wanted to do was work with children. Um, and for a while, that's what I was gonna do. Um, I didn't really have a reason for wanting to be in that field uh, other than I knew I wanted to work with children. Well, after a few semesters of being a general studies major, um, I decided that becoming a teacher was what my passion was. And I realized that because I was working at a cheer gym all throughout my first year of college. And I worked with the age group of between three and seven years old. Um, <clears throat> and from the start, I was always able to work with them, that age group, better than every everyone else was that I worked with. Um, I was able to get them to listen and to comprehend really what it is that they were supposed to be doing um, while keeping it fun at the same time. Um, and I only have one semester left at Calm. Um, I'm gonna graduate with my associates in the art of teaching. Um, and from there, I will apply to become an assistant teacher while I finish my bachelor's degree. So this is just a little bit about the history of teaching. Um, in the earlier colonial days, teachers were mostly, you know, housewives and ministers, um, and it was mostly women. There really were no men who were teachers, um, and the first public school was actually established in 1635, and then shortly after that is when dame schools opened, um, and a dame school is a private elementary school, um, and they were usually taught by women and they mostly taught from their homes. And at the same time, Massachusetts and Virginia passed laws requiring that for every 50 families, there be an elementary school. And then they passed a law that said for every 100 families, a Latin grammar school be built. Um, and in the colonial days, the only subjects that were taught were reading, writing, and religion. Nothing else was really important to anybody back then other than those three subjects. So in the 1800s, a little ways later down the line, um, Massachusetts required for every 500 families, there be a high school for all students. Um, and also in the 1800s is when teachers' training became more adequate. Um, it was um, more important for them to have good training, and that's when they started raising the pay for teachers. Um, most states were also requiring at this time that teachers needed to be certified and licensed to teach. And as y'all know, you know, every teacher has to get certified in the state that they work in. Um, so the 1800s is when that began. So the 1900s is when more men did start to become teachers because it became more of a desired profession. Um, it wasn't looked at as something that women had to do anymore. It was becoming a big profession, so men wanted to do it too. Now, the biggest turning point in education was in 1954. I know most people know um, about this U.S. Supreme Court case called Brown versus Board of Education. Um, it declared that separate but equal schools were actually unequal, and it's when they made all public schools in the U.S. integrated. Um, and today, in today's teaching world, it has advanced to where we now can learn off of televisions and computers, um, and it can make you know learning easier and most definitely more fun, but 
you know, just like we're doing an online course now. That was never a thing back in the day as where we can do that now because we have the technology to do so. Um, now, one of the most in influential people to the teaching world is definitely Aristotle. Um, he was an ancient Greek philosopher who spent most of his lifetime studying, reading, and writing. Um, he enrolled to Plato's Academy when he was 17 years old, um, and he became Alexander the Great's professional tutor. Um, Alexander the Great's father actually sought out Aristotle. He wanted him to be his son's um, tutor. And then after that, he founded a school named Lycium uh, in Athens. And that's where an assembly of a collection of manuscripts um, that it was made one of the world's first libraries. Um, all those manuscripts became one of the world's largest and greatest libraries. So Aristotle actually composed at least 200 different works. Um, one of his works was named Organon. Um, it's a set of writing that provide a logical toolkit for use in philosophical, philosophical, philosophical or scientific investigations. Um, he also has works on physics, which is about the nature of matter and change, um, as well as the metaphysics, which is a theory of existence. Um, there's a couple other, like the Nicomachean ethics and politics, which is about the nature of human flourishing and individual fami fam familial and societal levels. Sorry, some of these words are getting me all tongue-tied. Um, lastly, his re rhetoric and poems that are about human productivity, um, specifically things like life and how do you make a convincing argument um, and what tragedy will do to a person. Um, even though he did all this work, his main focus was on the concept of logic. Um, his concept was for man to learn everything about reality. So he did divide it up into three different types, which is theoretical, practical, and creative. Um, so that's a little bit about Aristotle. And presentations, I feel, um, are used all the time in today's educational world. Um, a presentation can be used as a good learning tool for students who are visual learners. So it helps like me, for example, it would help me remember things easier if I had something to look at. If I have something that I've seen and I can visualize it in my head, I can remember it easier than me just reading it out of a book. Um, I would do better in classes where we had a presentation shown for us that specific for us on that specific chapter or whatever it was that we were learning that day. Um, and today's presentations are mostly used for like junior high and high school kids who, you know, actually know what a presentation is. Um, <clears throat> so in my case, teaching kindergarten, I don't think I would use them very much. I, don't, I really don't think I would use them at all, actually, um, just because they don't really know what a presentation is when you're that age. Um, I do remember having presentations used in my high school classes um, more than I did at any other time. I guess it was just because it was the last time I was, um, you know, it was the last thing before graduation was high school, so I remembered it more. Um, mostly it was in my history classes. I think I remembered, remember like all my history classes. Most of the teachers used presentations to put all the information on the board. Um, and by having those presentations in front of me and having something to visualize, like I said earlier, in my head, I was able to remember the content much easier. Um, <clears throat> I do think teachers are a very important part of today's society. Um, I do believe that parents have such a big impact in a child's life and what kind of person that they're going to be when they grow older. Um, but I think that a teacher has just as much impact as the parent. Um, when a child gets into 
you know, gets a certain age, they're at school more than they're at home. So it's only right for the teacher to have such a big importance in a child's life. Um, I personally had a teacher when I was in the fourth grade. Um, she was, you know, the sweetest lady ever. Her name was Sister Joyce Ann. Um, I did go to Our Lady of Lords in Hitchcock, um, <clears throat> so she was a nun, but she was always such a motivating teacher and it made it really easy for you to want to come to school because she made her classroom, you know, fun. It wasn't, you know, just going and <clears throat> reading a book and doing nothing all day, but, you know, being lectured. Um, she made it fun for you to want to be at school. So, um, I'm really happy with the decisions that I've made as far as my um, educational career. I'm happy in the field of study that I've chose, um, and I'm really excited to see what my future um, has in store for me.